All right, guys. Hopefully everyone had a good weekend. Um, big week ahead and obviously a crazy week last week with the huge volatility in the markets and the large drawdown. We dropped last week from 245-ish um, on the daily candles. Let me show you know, change that one sec. So daily candles, as you can see, we dropped from 245 roughly, uh, the prior Friday close all the way down to a low of 322. So that was a decline from high to from the previous Friday to the low of about 7% in one week. So uh, worst week um, since March of the year, both the weekly charts, you can see these candles right here, right? So <clears throat> since this week in March back in, uh, sorry, February 24th week, when we had that huge plunge, uh, this is actually the worst week we've we've seen since then. And the expected and potential moves for SPY this week are enormous. So um, on the upside, we have a, um, an EM of 15 in another direction, right? So upside from the current price would be roughly 342. So right around, around over here. I'll zoom in a bit actually so you guys can see better. So if I go into the daily candles, right? So 342 area. So this would be your upper PM for the week, I mean, upper EM for the week. Right around, right around here, right? And then your lower uh, EM, I need to actually zoom out again in order to find that because it's much, much lower. The lower EM is at 312, right? So you can see that we have um, a huge, huge um, range of values for, the, for just the expected move alone this week, right? This is our expected range, just expected. Um, if we use the, uh, the straddle price of Four dollars, roughly. Um, that takes us our upper PM to three forty-six, right about over here. Oops, one sec. Right over here, roughly. And our lower PM would be right over uh, here at like three hundred eight, right? So we have a massive um, possible move this week on the election, which is Tuesday. And right now it's still pretty tight. Uh, I expect that if, if Trump wins handedly, you're going to see a nice pump in the market, probably to the range of 340 by Friday. If Trump doesn't win, uh, or if Biden wins handily, obviously, um, you can expect disputes and confusion and uncertainty and the market hates uncertainty. So that will likely cause us to test the downside range of this, right? And you can see that we have some support uh, right around here at like 309 ish um, back from July, right? And then the next level of support would be around 298 area, right? So you have um, pretty much polarizing uh, outcomes depending on who wins and how close the actual results are, right? If they're close, um, I expect results will take probably a few weeks to, uh, to, to um, determine the, the entire outcome, but if, for example, you know Trump wins in a landslide or Biden wins in a landslide, that will bring more certainty to the market. In the case of Biden winning, I expect a downside move to around 305, 300-ish. In the case of Trump winning, I expect an upside move to around 340 again by Friday, right? So um, how would you play this? Well, I mean, if you're not in the market right now, there's really no, no point in gambling and, and trying to catch a nice move. You're probably better off just sitting out and watching everything unfold, right? And learning from this. And this this video will, will kind of be a nice, um, you know, uh, uh, era piece to look back on in four years when we have our next election um, to see how it played out. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to post it on YouTube, obviously. We can, we can discuss it later on. Um, but in four years' time, you can, you know, watch this video later on and see how everything played out, right? Well, obviously, next weekend, um, I'll post a second video and we'll have uh, more information to go on right but uh that being said if you're not in the market right now um I would, I would sit out and i would wait for a bit right because obviously if you're um if you're gambling on a, a uh, upside move or a downside move the premiums are very very rich right now so you're paying very very high uh implied volatility rates right which inflates the vega of each option um if you're in in equities right now and you're heavily invested obviously you might want to buy some protection, but it's kind of too late now to buy protection because obviously we had a big fall last week of about 7%. And if you are buying insurance, you're gonna 
see uh, you know a shaving of the returns on your portfolio in the event that we do go up, right? Because keep in mind that buying at the money put right now costs about, I think it's about um, 750, yeah, 750 or so for Friday, right? Um, also, I wouldn't play the weeklies given that you're likely not gonna get the, the, um, the outcome of the election by Friday, right? Um, the better bet would, play, would be to play the November monthlies if you are gonna play at all. Um, but again, you know, uh, either you're, you're invested and you're just gonna hang on for the long term and, and maybe uh, dollar cost average on a pullback or you're not invested, in which case I would just sit out and watch the fireworks unfold, um, you know, and eat your popcorn, right? That's uh, the first thing, right? Um, last week we had tech earnings. Facebook wasn't that great. Overall, Twitter was abysmal. Pinterest crushed it, obviously, but they're still overvalued. Um, Apple had a poor report on declining iPhone sales, which was expected because most people were waiting until the new one was released in or, uh, before they bought one, right? So it wasn't a surprise that the past quarter of iPhone sales was low because obviously why would anyone buy a new iPhone before the 12 Pro or, or, or Pro Max were released, right? So I expect Apple to have a nice recovery eventually because I think they're doing pretty well overall. Um, same with Netflix, they raise their prices on their memberships um, each each month. That caused a pop in their stock price too. We'll actually look at, um, so you can see Apple right here had a nice pullback, support levels right around uh, 100 or so. But if we break that, we can see 96, which I mentioned a few, um, a few weeks ago, I was expecting that to happen in the next few months. Uh, and then obviously you have support right at um, around 90 area, right? So if we do have a bloody week in the markets and uh, we do test that downside on SPY, expect to see Apple somewhere around uh, between 100 and 95-ish. And that might be a decent buying opportunity for anyone that wants to get in the longer term. Uh, Facebook, again, pulled back as well. So you had a nice downside move over there on uh, on Friday. Uh, they had declining um, MAUs in Canada and the US, which isn't good for them, obviously. And the lower area would be around... 245 ish uh, come Friday, but there is also a huge gap to fill back from July 30th at around uh, 334.50, right? So that gap could be filled as well. Obviously, that would require a large downside move in the broad markets for that to, that to happen this week, right? Um, AMD had, had a great report as well, and they still fell last week because they were, they were announcing the uh, acquisition of Xilinx, uh, XLNX. Uh, it's more of a merger actually because they're, they're doing an all, all stock transaction but either way they fell from about 85 down to 75 or so so about a 13 percent decline and as you can see on, on the three month chart over here they're right near support which is right around um 73 88 area right or 73 90 area right so if they do break the support level expect them to test out well, I mean, I guess I could test on pretty much um, like high 50s, low 60s, right? And that's where I expect it to go in the, in the short term. But I do think that they're a good long, long term buy regardless. So if you are dollar cost averaging, if you're already in it, I know a few of you are. It's not a bad idea to, uh, to DCA on the way down. And obviously, if you want to sell cover calls to pull in fat premiums, um, you know, a few weeks out, you can do that as well. And obviously, sell above your break even cost too, right? But keep in mind that if we do get a Trump win, and he wins handedly, expect a nice big pump in the markets and expect everything else to pump too, right? Netflix also over here. So you can see that we had a nice big pump on Thursday on the news of them raising their subscription fees, followed by a dump on Friday, right? Obviously due to the market pulling back heavily on those tech earning reports I mentioned, right? Um, again, you see pretty heavy support right around like 460 area um, and, and then at 450 area. If it breaks below that, then you're looking at uh, roughly like 400 area, right? Four, 405 to 420 area. Um, but they're one of the COVID stocks, so I expect them to keep doing pretty well. Um, what else was down a lot this week? This coming week we have for earnings, let me see. So we have earnings for the week ahead. I'll just show you guys over here. You can see we have uh, PayPal after close tomorrow. We have um, SolarEdge, 
And solar stocks have been, have been on fire. The TAN uh, ETF is up a lot this year. Cirrus Logic, Wayfair on Tuesday, Humana, McKesson, uh, After Hours, you have um, not really much on Tuesday After Hours. Wednesday, um, you have Hilton Worldwide in the morning. You have Qualcomm after close, uh, Mercado Libre, which is the Amazon of Brazil. Um, Corvo, Match.com. Thursday, prior to market open, you have Alibaba, AstraZeneca, which is AZN, Regeneron, uh, Kronos Group, Papa John's Pizza. After close on Thursday, you have Square. Keep in mind, Square invested, uh, I believe, $50 million into Bitcoin a few weeks ago. So th their stock price um, should see some upside if Bitcoin can keep moving higher and higher. It's at around 14,000 right now, as I speak. Uh, Roku, Peloton, Cloudflare, the Trade Desk, Dropbox, Alterix, Uber. And then on Friday morning, you have CVS before market open, Viacom, CVS. Um, and that's pretty much it. So Thursday is going to be pretty busy overall. I expect a lot of volatility in Square, Roku, and Peloton, and Cloudflare, obviously. And we do have the uh, EM and PM sheet, which I'll show right now as well. So you can see that for Friday. And just to go over last week's uh, EMs and PMs, last week, um, 22 out of 42 tickers closed outside of their range. 13 out of 42 tickers breached temporarily yet closed within their range. 41 out of 42 tickers closed red on the week. So a big red week. The only one that closed green that was analyzed by uh, by Frankie. Thank you again, Frankie, for doing all, all the great work you do. Um, was Pinterest, right? So Pinterest was, was the largest gainer last week at, at uh, up 11.3%. Notable losers were Boeing down 13.7%. Fastly down 16.7%. Spotify down 15.4%. Square down 12.3% and Zoom meeting down 9.9%. Um, obviously, AMD from that high of the week on Monday, which was about around 85, was down about 12.3% as well. So for the week ahead, we have um, Alibaba earnings. Their potential move is $32 in one direction. So 10.4% uh, possible move, right? Upper PM, 336.52. Lower PM, 272.86. Uh, I expect them to have a great a great report given that uh, Asia is doing better right now and the Chinese economy is is um, is back on track somewhat at least better than than uh, what we're doing right now in North America and Europe right uh, EA reports next week as well their PM is eleven dollars and six cents or nine point two percent upside one thirty point eight nine downside one hundred eight seventy seven Peloton has a PM of $18.80 or 17%. That's upside of 129.18, downside of 91.58. PayPal has a PM of 22.21 or 12%. Their upside is 208.56 near their all-time high. And their downside is 164.14. Uh, if PayPal does fall, I'll be interested in going long on them around 150-ish if it pulls back at all there. Qualcomm has a PM on the week of $12.32 or 10%, upside 135.70, downside 111.06. And keep in mind, guys, these are just um, the um, expected and potential moves based upon the option pricing from Friday, right? It doesn't mean that it's going to land on that price. It's just a, a kind of a, um, a barometer of where the pricing should land based upon option pricing from last week, right? So it's a good gauge of where you can target your spreads, right? If you want to go long a put spread or a call spread, you can use the EM or the PM to, um, to target your short or long strikes, right? Or also also create your, your, your uh, iron condors if you want as well. Roku has a large potential move for the week, $33.08 or 16.3%. The upside is 235.47. The downside is 169.31. Virgin Galactic has been getting beat up pretty hard as well. And that has a PM of 271 or 15.5%. Upside would be 2013. <clears throat> Downside would be 1471, which is right near their support area right there. Obviously, if they pull back, I'll be happy to go long some, uh, some shares there or possibly some more leaps as well. And keep in mind that they have their, um, their launch date 
Um, I mean, it's not it's not yet set, but their launch window is currently uh, in progress, and it could happen any day, right? So it's po it's possible it happens this week, and they announce it, and then you know if it goes well, the stock price could see a nice upside move on that. Obviously, because right now they have no revenues, right? So there's not really much to report in the earnings report, right? Square, um, their potential, potential move is $21.26 in other direction or 13.7%. Upside move is 176.25. Downside move 133.73. Take two interactive, um, $16.80 uh, potential move or 10.8%. Upside 171.72. Downside 138.12. Uber has a $5.27 uh, potential move. Their uh, upside is 38.68, downside 28.14. And then we have Wayfair as well, which has a potential move of $41.15 or 16.6%, upside 289.17, downside 206.87, right? And then obviously for the Qs, which is the NASDAQ ETF, the expected move for the week, or sorry, the, the uh, potential move for the week is 6.3% or $17.05 in other direction, right? So you have upside of 287.18, downside of 253.08. Again, um, based on my um, my thesis, I think that if Trump wins handily, we see a big move to the upside because that creates more certainty. And you're probably going to see um, a stimulus getting passed right away as well, right? So keep that in mind too. Trump kind of um, held that as as his uh, ace, in the, um, ace, ace in his sleeve, right? He he uh, declined to pass stimulus prior to the, the election because he wants people to think that if um, they vote they vote Biden in, they'll be waiting until January uh, at the earliest to get get any kind of stimulus whatsoever, right? So he wanted to kind of hold off on that and entice people to vote for him with that in, in his sleeve, right? Um, so that's kind of a, a double whammy to the upside if he wins, right? If he wins handedly, and then you get, you get a stimulus as well, you might see us push all-time highs again in the next two, three weeks, right? Uh, but if Biden wins, obviously uh, more uncertainty comes, and then you're going to see us test the downside area of around 300 on SPY, right? Um, that's it for, for the EMs and PMs. Um, what else for the week? Gonna look at uh, oh yeah so there's a AMD as well let me already analyze that too um, there was oh yeah Facebook oh yeah Amazon actually yeah she mentioned Amazon earlier right so Amazon had a nice downside move as well um, and their support is around twenty nine hundred bucks right so if they pull back to this level over here this might not be a terrible level to either well I wouldn't say sell cash through puts because each put you sell requires you to put up about three hundred thousand dollars in collateral right. Um, so I wouldn't say that, but put spreads, perhaps, um, bull put spreads around this area. If it's touched, touched over here, might not be a bad idea. Um, alternatively, you could go long stock if you're, if you're buying shares, right? It's not a bad idea either. They had a phenomenal report too, and, uh, they were pulled back uh, on that report as well. Right. So keep in mind that earnings are a total crapshoot and you have companies that, that beat earnings and fall companies that miss earnings and pop. It doesn't really matter what happens, right? Um, a lot of it is sell the news, right? So we saw that happen a little bit with Amazon on Friday. Um, but obviously, now the election takes the, um, the the driver's seat for the market, and that will be all we're following for the next uh, four to five days, and possibly the next two to three weeks, depending on the results, right? So um, yeah, that's pretty much it right now that, uh, that I'm watching. Um, I'm I'm. I myself am sitting on my hands for the most part this week. I'm going to obviously straddle on Thursday and Friday, uh, uh, certain names that I that I usually straddle. But otherwise, I'm just going to pretty much sit out and watch the the market unfold. Um, however, if you are interested in doing an iron condor, for example, um, Spy has an interesting one. Um, very very wide for Friday. You can do the um, one second. I'll actually build it right now. One sec. Pull up my option chain. So if you go out, outside of the expected and potential moves, you can see for Friday, if you go down to, for example, 300, right? And you sell the 300 strike by the 285, right? And you go up to the 245 strike over here, sell that, and you buy the 350 strike. 
uh, sorry, I meant 3, 345 and 350, not, not 245. So you create a five wide iron condor and your short legs are at 300 and 345. So in essence, you have a $45 max profit window. Um, you're pulling a credit of about 75 cents. Your maximum risk is 425. So again, I wouldn't bet the farm on this because if we do get uh, you know, a, a Biden win, um, you're probably gonna see a downside move and it could test that 300 area. <clears throat> again, a Trump, a Trump win, if you're long the market and you're not really worried about a, um, an upside move to 345, then it wouldn't, it wouldn't really hurt you overall because your portfolio would benefit on an upside move, but you might get a, get a loss on the iron condo, right? So not a bad idea over here. Risk reward is about, um, it's about 4.5 or so to, uh, sorry, it's uh, if you're making 0.75 divided by 425. So risk reward isn't that great overall, but again, um, the probability of it hitting isn't that high either, right? You have a delta of 0 0.059 on the short side of 345 and a delta of 0 0.074 on the short side at 300, right? So just an interesting idea for you guys to kind of you know look at as a, as a um, little bit of a you know, learning experiment, if you will. Um, again, if you're not experienced with iron condors, I wouldn't touch it. And if you are experienced with iron condors, do so with a very, very small amount. Like I would say, you know, 1% of your portfolio maximum, right? Because you can manage your risk first and foremost, right? So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it that I'm watching this week. I'm just going to, you know, uh, take it as it comes to me and, um, I'll play probably later in the week as we get the moves, but I'm not going to gamble on a big upside or downside move prior to the, the election results. Right. So. Um, any questions, guys? Yeah, I got two questions. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, first question.